Okay, welcome back to a new physics exercise or physics problem because this is, I think, a very famous problem that is usually asked in examinations uh, in mechanics uh, because I think it's also very instructive. Yeah? So the text here, in this case, we will just go through it uh, step by step. So the text here says that a roller coaster contains a loop with a radius of 8 meter. Yeah? And uh, the task is now to calculate the minimum height from which a car or a train starts or has to start in order to pass the loop without falling down at the highest point. Uh, so um, it sounds complicated, but when we go now through it step by step, then we will find out that it's actually quite simple. Uh, the first thing which we, of course, always do is making or drawing a sketch. Uh, so I will try to do that now. Um, and please forgive me again my my bad uh, drawing skills. So yeah, something like that. I know that in reality a looping is not a circle. Now it looks different, but for the time being we assume uh, that this has a circular shape, and uh, this here is now defined as a circle. So maybe I can try to draw it a little bit better. Um, yeah, somehow you can identify that. Um, okay, uh, now here we have our car that starts from here. And here is the center of the car and we define this now as the height from which the car actually starts moving. And we assume that it does not have any speed in the beginning. Yeah, It just starts from here with a speed equal to zero. And then the car here goes down into that looping and uh, here after some time it of course reaches the highest point. Yeah? And the important thing is that from here it does not fall down. So what we know here is, uh, I mean, what is what is searched for is the height, h, and it's also always, I think, recommended to uh, to also insert um, the unknown parameters into the sketch, so we know later uh, what we want to calculate actually, and we are not losing the overview. So here, what is what is known is actually the radius of the loop, which is given as eight meter. And then here, of course, as I said, in the highest point, the car should not fall down. So we have two forces here acting on that, which we also should insert into our sketch. One is, of course, the gravitational force, because the car has a mass, so the gravitation, the Earth, pulls on it. And on the other hand, we have, of course, a force, uplifting force, yeah, which is going in the opposite direction, which has to compensate the gravitational force in order not to fall down. And this is actually the centrifugal force, yeah? whether you are here talking about centrifugal or centripetal force. This is some other topic. Um, maybe we can discuss about this on an, on another video. But here for the time being, we can assume that the centrifugal force, which is pressing the car to the track, compensates this gravitational force. Yeah, and then in principle, our sketch is complete. Yeah? So we can directly formulate our condition. Yeah? So as I said, uh, maybe we can switch back here to black color. We have here our condition, which has to be fulfilled. Uh, that um, centrifugal force must be, uh, sorry, must be larger or equal than uh, gravitation. And this we can also, of course, note down with with the help of formulas. So the centrifugal force, of course, is, is uh, simple, actually. It is um, mv squared divided by r. You can also use m omega squared times r, but in this case, if we use this formula, you will later see that it's directly uh, easier. And then, as I said, this has to be larger or equal than mg, yeah, because we are just in near the uh, uh, surface of the Earth. The gravitation does not change. It's more or less constant, m times the g factor. And then immediately you see here that some things cancel out, and this is m here in this case. And uh, yeah, then if we if we sorry if we solve this uh, for v or for v square in this case, then we see here that v square should be larger than g r. Yeah? So uh, this is a very important formula. Whenever you have some some circular track inside the um, uh, gravitational field of the Earth, then you can actually uh, use this formula. We will also use this maybe in other exercises more frequently. So the reason why I uh, wrote down v square and not v, 
which would be the square root of that, of course, is because later we can calculate v square easily and then we can insert this directly into our formula. We don't have to square the equation and so on. Yeah. And the reason why we can get v square very easy, and this is actually the unknown factor here in this formula, is uh, because we can use some other theorem in, in physics, in mechanics, uh, which makes this calculation quite easy. And this is, of course, the conservation of energy. Yeah, so we can write here uh, conservation of energy. And uh, yeah, uh, we know the potential and the kinetic energy, the sum of potential and kinetic energy always has to be constant. Yeah? It cannot change. So in this case, uh, we can write, for example, here, uh, E pot, potential energy, energy uh, plus E kinetic must be E pot uh, prime, let's call it, plus E kin prime. Yeah, so E pot and E kin, the left side is, are the initial conditions when the car is actually here. So in this case, uh, we can easily say that the speed, as I said, is zero, which means the kinetic energy must be also zero. And E pot, this is also simple, is just uh, M times G times H. And of course, H we don't know. So here E pot and E pot prime and E kin prime are actually... Uh, the kinetic and potential energy at this maximum height here, which is given as 2R. Yeah? So this we can also maybe here just uh, insert into our, um, into our sketch. So this is actually 2R. So, and um, yeah, then we can write here, of course, that the potential energy must be mg 2R. This is the height. And the kinetic energy, we don't know. So we can actually directly insert this general formula one half mv square. Yeah? And then you can also see here why we used v square because we can use this v square directly from here. So what we uh, can do in the next step, we can <coughs> actually, uh, yeah, we can we can note this down again uh, or write this down as it as we said, mgh equals mg2r plus one half m v square. And yeah, that then of course you can see immediately m cancels out. So again, we can cancel out something. And what we will do also in the next step, we multiply this with two. Yeah, So we can isolate v square. And then when we solve that for v square, then we can write v square equals um, g h minus g 2 r, but because we multiplied it with 2, we have actually here an again a factor of 2, which means um, 2gh minus g4r. Okay, and now the only thing which we have to do now, we have to insert that here into this v square that we have uh, this condition which we wrote down before. So now uh, we can write here inserting v square into initial condition and this then gives uh, 2gh minus g4r must be uh, larger or equal to gr. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is everything. H is, as I said, what we want to calculate, actually. So we can write down here, um, if we bring this to the other side, 2GH must be larger or uh, equal to um, 5GR. And of course, G we can also cancel out here again. And then what follows at the end is that H must be smaller or larger than... Um, 5 half r and this we know r as i said before this is 8 meter so what comes out at the end as a result is uh, 40 divided by 2 which means 20 meter okay so we know now when we start the car from the height of 
20 meter yeah uh, we can write this down here 20 meter then it would pass the looping without any problem um, but of course it is in uh, only under ideal conditions so we completely ignored any kind of friction we ignored air resistance and so on so uh, in reality the height must be a little bit higher but i have tested this already with some yeah uh, marble track at home and uh, we have also done this experiment in in, um, in our school classes it works very well if you go a little bit beyond this five half r five half the radius of the of the looping then uh, it actually passes the looping without any issue okay um yeah this is everything what i want to explain i hope that you um that you enjoyed the exercise that you learned something and uh that you see that even a exercise which sounds complicated in the beginning can be actually solved very easy and the good thing of this uh the good thing of this exercise is also that we learned how to use the um the energy conservation law um, which makes the calculation quite easy of course you can also do it much more complicated and use other uh, formulas uh, from kinematics yeah? or dynamics you can uh, calculate use f equal ma for example but all that makes it much more complicated and um, here in this case the exercise is really in a way that you can you don't need to know the the motion of the car or the train in every point of this uh, track it is just enough that you know the initial condition and the condition uh, at the at the maximum where it actually should not fall down and then you can uh, just use energy conservation and to to solve this problem yeah so yeah as i said i hope you enjoyed it uh, if if you like it uh, please hit the like button please subscribe my channel if you have not done so far so you will not miss any further video and uh, hopefully see you back soon for the next video.